Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. I have another scrapbooking project for you that is perfect for those teenage memories. Today I'm going to share how to make your photos the focal point of the page when you have busy patterns to work with. I'm going to be using the Graffiti Art Page Kit today. This one includes some fabulous patterns from Reminisce and Vicki Booten. In this kit, you also receive acetate film frames, sequins, and some paints. On my previous project, I used some shimmers and the cardstock cut. If you're interested in that, I'll add a link to the video in the description below. As I create my layout today, I'll use a few other items in my craft collection. You'll find a list of those supplies I used and a link to the kit on my website and in the description below this video. When I create a page, I always start with the photo and the background patterns. These are the basic elements needed to tell the story. This layout is going to have a large black and white photo and I'm going to create a background of torn patterns. I'm going to place the soft grid pattern at the top and bottom of the page and I'm going to layer these over that typeset paper. The typeset pattern is going to create a little bit of white on this page to help balance out the patterns around the photo. To break up those patterns, I'm going to layer some black cardstock behind that green grid pattern. Using some liquid adhesive, I'm going to attach the two together. Then I'll take a water brush and run it along the black cardstock near the edge of that pattern paper. The water is going to soften the fibers of the cardstock and make the tear easier to control so that it can match the shape of the torn edges. This is a solid core cardstock, so there will not be any white showing through, which is the look that I'm going for. Once all the black cardstock was torn, I tucked bits of brick pattern behind the two layers. These two pieces of brick are going to be placed on the opposite side of my photo so that they complement it. This was the pattern I was a bit worried about using. There are some lime green spray paint splatters and very bold brick lines. But I know that if I keep this pattern minimal, it won't overpower the page. To create the torn pieces at the top of the page, I'm using a water brush again to help me control the tearing. And then I'll add all my layers to this area of the page. Placing the brick pattern in three areas is forming a nice visual triangle. And the horizontal lines are creating a natural flow across the page from the photo to the journaling to the title. After adhering all these layers in place, I used a water brush once more to wet the edges of the papers so that I could start rolling and adding a few more tears to the edges. The water helps soften the fibers and makes it much easier to roll. Just be careful not to get it too wet or some of the papers will pile or peel a bit, which I don't mind because it adds to the worn texture of the layout. At the top of the page, I'm also going to roll the edges and create what looks like an opening in a wall with exposed brick. This is going to form an arrow-like shape that's going to point towards my photo. While I finish this bit of paper rolling, I would love it if you tap that subscribe button and let me know in the comments that you're new here. Or tap that little thumbs up icon and let me know if you enjoyed today's project. Off camera, I added some random stitching around the edges of the torn papers and some zigzag stitches to the top of the page. To make my photo the focal point, I'm going to place it on the left side of the page. Most people read from left to right, and placing the photo here shows them what is important. I have matted the photo in black, and I'm going to frame it with some cardstock frames from Pink Fresh. These were from a previous kit in my collection, and the colors match perfectly. I'm also going to layer some acetate film strips from the kit. 
I cut one of the film strips in half so that it would span the length of the photo and create a longer vertical piece. Not only do these vertical pieces bring that photo to the forefront, they also break up all the horizontal lines on the page, which is something that was needed. Around the photo, I'm going to add a few leaves. Right now, this layout has a more masculine feel, which I like, but I want to give this a little bit of a girly vibe. To match the feel of the other elements on the page, I'm going to splatter these leaves with black paint and some blue Lagoon Shimmers paint. Both of these are items that come in the kit, and they're going to give these kind of a grungy feel. Using paint or shimmers or ink on your flowers gives them a great distressed look. You can also use a sanding block or a foam dauber and just add a little bit of ink around the edges. Once the paints were dry, I could add these to the page. I'm going to place most of them on the left side of the photo along with this little phrase that says, listening to this on repeat. The round shapes of the leaves and the phrase die cut are helping to break up some of the harsh lines in the pattern papers. They also bring a natural element to the page, which softens the bolder patterns. The addition of blue is starting to create an analogous color palette, and that softer hue gives your eye a place to rest amongst all the bright colors. When our children were this age, I found creating pages for teens to be difficult. They aren't adults yet, so you want to keep the pages fun, but they're no longer littles, so you can't bring in all those cuddly little toy icons. Most teens are anything but cuddly. I've always tried to create pages that match their personality. At this age, they're figuring themselves out, so they change monthly, and the pages that you make should help tell that story. I've brought in a cardstock cut from Not Just For Boys, and I'm laying it on the right side of the page with some floral pieces. The white cardstock is creating another break in the patterns. I'm going to cut this into two pieces and adhere it on both sides of the page with a break right below the photo. By doing this, I've created another focus point. The lines of this cardstock cut are working like arrows pointing towards the photo. The addition of florals on this piece adds another feminine touch and starts the formation of a visual triangle with the other elements I already added. On the right side of the photo, I want to add some journaling. I'm going to need to cover up that typeset text pattern, so I've grabbed a frame which I'll back with some white cardstock. I need to cut out that center portion to make this a hollow frame, and then I'll go off camera and type up my journaling so I can finish the page. Off camera, I added that journaling piece. Before I sent this through the printer, I stenciled a grid pattern onto it with some weathered wood ink, and I added some acrylic paint splatters. This created a really cool backdrop for the story, and it matches those other patterns on the page. Below the story, I added a product strip in a craft color. This matches the leaves on the page and creates a grounding strip for the journal and the photo. I also added some stitching to the headphones at the base of the page. I placed a few little zigzags here and there to make it feel more attached to that background. Now I'm going to finish up with some elements to form the final point of my visual triangle. I'm going to bring in some blue and green and add some more leaves above the journaling. I don't want to add too much, just enough to finish off this space. Before I add the title, I want to bring in more black splatters. The typeset pattern did have some splatters printed on it, so I'm continuing that pattern above and below the photo. I'm going to mask off some of these spaces because I don't want any of the paint to get on those headphones or the photo. As I add the splatters, I'm trying to make sure I'm creating a, another visual line 
that's leading your eye to the focus of that page, which is the photo. When the paint had dried, I added a simple title near that lower flower and finished off the layout with some sequins from the kit. There's a wonderful variety of colors and shapes and patterns in this sequins mix, but I stuck to the deep green and sea glass colored ones for my page. I'm going to finish adhering these in place and then I'll show you the completed layout. Here is the page that I created with the graffiti art page kit. I have to admit, I was fearful about using this kit because of the bold patterns, lines, and colors, but I'm loving how this page turned out. The textures created with the rolled torn papers made an awesome backdrop while still keeping that photo the focal point of the layout. Stepping out of my comfort zone has been my theme for the year. I often shy away from bold patterns and bright colors because I fear they're going to overpower my photos. Instead of avoiding the patterns, I let them do the work for me and paired them with other elements that would keep my photo the focal point of the page. I hope this project inspired you to give this graffiti art kit a try. If you're one who enjoys pinning photos to inspiration boards, I have added photos of this layout on the Not Just For Boys Kit Club blog and on my website for you to use. If you would like more ideas for using this kit, you can join the Not Just For Boys Kit Club community on Facebook and see even more designs. I want to thank you for joining me today for another scrapbook project. If you have any questions about this project or the supplies listed below, feel free to post that in the comments. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.